school, classical physics teaches us how large objects behave, and we intuitively apply these rules to everything around us. We like large objects because they're predictable. Like a ball. Even if you hate balls, a regular ball is much more preferable than a quantum ball, which will most likely annoy you because its behavior makes no sense. Put aside the mathematics, and you'll find large objects feel familiar. Human beings are capable of predicting complex physics without even knowingly thinking about it. However, it turns out that things behave very differently when you get really really really, really, really small. We can see this by doing tests and mathematics, but it makes no intuitive sense, because this super small world has rules we can't imagine. We have to figure out these rules, before we can properly imagine this world. The best way to describe quantum physics is therefore to show you some examples of quantum behavior. For this we will do an imaginary experiment. Let's start with a familiar large particle. A tennis ball will do. Imagine a ball machine, firing a spread of tennis balls against a wall. It would look something like this. Now imagine two holes in the wall, just big enough for the balls. Behind this we have a house. Now if we start shooting, some of the balls are going to pass through the holes, and hit the house. After a while we can expect the side of the house to look something like this. As you'd expect, each ball either hits the wall, or makes it through a hole. The distribution probabilities can be easily calculated. It makes sense. This, is regular physics. Now let's cover up hole number one. This is the distribution we can expect from balls hitting the house. Covering up hole 2 only, and we can expect a similar pattern. Uncover both holes, and the spray of balls hitting the house is the equivalent of adding these two patterns together. This is showing us particle behavior. Surely particles of any size should behave like this. In classical theory they did, until quantum theory came along and ruined everything. Physics lessons also teach us about waves, and that light and sound behave as waves just like water. So let's replicate this setup for waves, and replace our ball machine with a simple wave maker. Again we have a wall with holes, and beyond that some means of detection. If we run this experiment with our first hole blocked, we can expect to see the waves arriving at the detector, like this. It's a distribution that looks pretty similar to our particle experiment. And with the second hole blocked, it's predictably similar. However, unblock both holes, and the waves interfere with themselves, resulting in a different pattern appearing at our detector. This is because of the constructive and destructive interference of the waves, which is classic wave behavior. It feels right. Now, let's look at what would happen if we try to replicate this experiment with an electron gun instead. Imagine the ball machine, shrunk down to electron size. If we block hole number one only, and fire the electron gun, we will get a similar distribution to our tennis ball experiment. The electrons seem to bounce around like balls, and behave as particles are expected to. Blocking just hole 2, and again, the distribution is as we'd expect. All seems reasonable. So electrons are particles, and that's the end of it according to classical physics. However, when both holes are open, we notice something unexpected. The distribution of electrons at the detector, resembles the pattern produced by waves instead. What we have now, is something that behaves like a particle, or a wave, or neither, or both, and that has annoyed many physicists till this day. 
We will now add a light source between the holes in the detector, and see what happens. We know, that electrons can be seen as they travel through light, so if we place a suitable light source close enough, maybe we can see what they're actually doing. If we block off hole number one, and fire our electrons, we should see a flash of light near hole two, as it passes the light source. Do this for a while, and we get the same pattern at the detector, as we did without a light. Just like the tennis ball example. Block off hole two only, and we get the same result. When an electron makes it to the detector, we see a flash of light next to the hole it passes through, resulting in the same predictable pattern of distribution. The electrons are pretending to be particles. Now, if we open both holes and fire our electron gun, the arrival of electrons at our detector no longer follows the wave pattern as before, but is instead distributed in the same way, as with our tennis ball particle experiment. So all of a sudden, by using a light which allows us to see which hole the electrons pass through, there appears to be no interference, and the distribution pattern of the arriving electrons, is simply the sum of the patterns from hole 1 and hole 2. Switch the light off, and the pattern of electrons detected, shows the wave distribution again, demonstrating the return of interference. So what is going on? By trying to watch our experiment, we have changed the results. The presence of a light, allowing us to see the electrons, therefore has a significant effect, and prevents any wave-like interference from occurring. This would be the equivalent of running our tennis ball experiment at night, and getting completely different results. We know from many experiments, that while electrons can exhibit both wave and particle-like behaviors, neither is a complete explanation. This is known as wave-particle duality. We are now just touching the surface, of these strange behaviors. This example of matter waves, embodies another core aspect of quantum physics known as the uncertainty principle. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle tells us, that due to the complicated relationship, between a particle's position, and speed, there will always be a range of uncertainty when trying to predict these values. The more accurately we try to determine one of these, the larger the scope of uncertainty for the other. This does not fit well with the world as we know it. It is hard to imagine something that acts like this, because none of our daily experiences ever include this type of behavior. However, the good thing about such small things, is that if we know the possible range of values, and have a guess, then no matter how wrong we are, the difference is not likely to be noticeable. These observations also support other fundamental theories, about quantum physics. The interference peaks, from an electron wave observed in the experiment with two holes, suggests that despite there being just a single electron, something is going through both holes to cause the wave interference pattern. This is an example of quantum superposition, which simply put, is the ability of a quantum particle to be in two places at the same time. Another peculiar behavior is called quantum tunneling. This is the ability of a quantum particle, to tunnel through barriers. Crazy, but very important stuff. Without quantum tunneling, there would be no fusion reactions in the sun, and it would have drained its energy a long time ago. So what we have now, is a construct of observations that describe some aspects of quantum behavior. The logic behind this behavior is still unclear, but the observations are real. In classical physics we are accustomed to calculating, and predicting things exactly. However in quantum physics we cannot do this. At best, we can predict probabilities, write formulas and draw curves to represent where things are most likely to be. This is not due to the lack of quality or precision in our observations, but a fundamental property of incredibly small things. And we have shown that in trying to observe quantum behavior, there is every chance that you will affect what you are trying to see. This is known as the observer effect. Quantum physics has earned its place, 
with over 90 years of experience, experiments, and observations. So just when you've gotten used to the deterministic and mechanical way the world works, along comes quantum mechanics to tell you it's not strictly true, but just a very good guess. Nature is much cooler and weirder than we imagined. Quantum theory gives us an appreciation that the laws of reality, as we know them, are actually a consequence of a completely foreign and strange reality on the subatomic level. You should now have some insight into the world of quantum mechanics. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to press the nice buttons. I will now leave you to return to the world as you know it. Bye bye.